Have a good evening. Welcome to Open Forum. We're here once again on the next Thursday evening with Maureen and myself to discuss topics as usual that are linked to our career, personal, and professional development. So thank you for joining us. We've been focusing over, over the last few weeks on topics linked to our emotions and how we manage them, how we deal with them. Today, we're going one step further, looking at another topic linked to emotions. This time, we're looking at emotions in the workplace. And we're placing a specific focus, not just on emotions in the workplace in general, but how do you manage emotions in a hostile or difficult work environment? I don't know whether you've had experience of working in hostile work, work environments, but you must have had experience of working in difficult ones. So even as I was preparing for the topic, I said, let's get for those people who have been so fortunate never to have worked in a hostile working environment. We don't leave anyone out. So for those who haven't, you can look at working in just a difficult environment. And I'm sure we all would have worked in difficult work environments. Now, before we go further, I want to make one thing quite clear because we're saying about how to manage emotions in a hostile workplace. Now, I want to make it quite clear from the very outset. At the hostile workplace is not to be tolerated by anyone. And so whilst we're seeing how to manage emotions, I'm also making it quite clear, it should not be tolerated. So if you're working in a hostile workplace, now then you should be doing something about it. If you can't complain, comment, bring about change, then do something about it. So that's my disclaimer up front. And I want to make it quite clear that we're not saying that you should condone hostile working environment or hostile workplaces. And to be a bit clearer, I just want to explain what I mean by hostile workplaces or work environments. It's one in which a person or a group of people experience harassment, they might experience intimidation, aggression, bullying, or any place that can support or that supports or leads to discrimination, intimidating or humiliating practices, which interfere with your work. So, Reflect on your on your work environment. And if you think by any means your work environment is one where there is discrimination, harassment, intimidation, or bullying, then that can be categorized as a hostile workplace. So as we begin to get get into the program, let me ask you, as you're joining us online. The time to think about your experience and maybe begin to share experiences of where you might have worked in a difficult or let's begin with a hostile workplace. If you've worked in what you may consider a hostile workplace or work environment, just begin to share with us some of your experiences so we can discuss them as we go through the program. So in the chat, let's begin to, to begin to, to share some experiences of working in these um, hostile work environments. And here's where I want to bring Maureen into maybe begin to shed some light, whether if it is through her own experiences or what she may be advising others. How do you deal with working in a hostile environment? So you find yourself in a hostile environment what do you do about it and how you deal with it? Maureen, what are your thoughts here? Good 
dealing with working in a hostile environment, I can imagine, and not only imagine, I know that it is nothing easy. But how do you cope with deal with a hostile environment? First, we are talking about how our emotions are affected, because we're still on the topic of dealing with our emotions. And so up front, I would want to say that the way in which you deal with um, a hostile envir environment will have to do largely on your own self-esteem, your confidence, your self-confidence, um, how close you are working with these persons within this environment who is being hostile, and your professional courage. But dealing with it can only be dealt with or should only be dealt with one way. You report it. You do not condone it. You do not allow yourself to be abused by the perpetuators. You ask for the behaviors to stop. You cannot be leaving your home, a place where you feel safe, you feel comfortable, and go into a, an environment that is toxic and, and you feel comfortable about it. That's not what you are going to work for. And so it is clear that you should not condone any hostility within the environment. You report it. You have management. You have the human resources department and you report it there. You ask that the, whatever the, behave, the behavior is, you ask that it be stopped. And you have to be honest about how you feel. You have to be able to express yourself. You must be persistent about how you express yourself. You cannot condone it one day and then one day you're not um you're not for it you must be persistent with how you are dealing with these matters within the environment and you are asking for support wherever necessary that's the only way you can really deal with hostility within an environment and expect that it is going to improve or to get any resolution coming out of it, Gerald. Thanks for sharing, Lamarine. And, and I want to pick up on one thing you, you mentioned, and it is about basically um, be honest about your feelings. Many people who are bullied or many people who are being harassed sometimes see themselves as the problem. They see, they think it's something that they may have, they may have done wrong. So even in even in being honest with their feelings, they may still want to blame themselves. If I hadn't said this, this wouldn't have happened. If I hadn't done that, then that, 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 that wouldn't have happened. So, so I think it's important as we talk about being honest with your feelings, it will be really honest and calling things out for what they are, not taking the blame or holding yourself responsible when you are the victim of it. Um, I can I probably want to begin by um or to continue rather by welcoming my HR colleague um to the forum. I see Lavorne from Guyana who's in line. Lavorne a, a, a good welcome to you and, and I'm sure that as a HR practitioner you will surely be sharing your thoughts and your views on either having to work or to manage in a difficult um, or a hostile work environment. Um, yes, yeah, so so I I want to hear your comments and hear your thoughts and experiences of when you may have had to work in a hostile environment. I see Tash is saying that you educate yourself on the laws of the land and gather your evidence. Um, Joy is saying also, that is, if it is not coming from top management. Wow. So <laughs> here's the thing, and these are two very, very interesting and important comments. You have to get yourself to the laws of the land and gather your evidence. Gathering information is a very, very key aspect 
of being able to support your case because sometimes bullying harassment can be very subtle but very very effective and only when you have clear evidence it can become effective and what is clear evidence is making note of date and time and who and what occurred if you have any written evidence any voice evidence, any recordings you have as much evidence as possible because there's sometimes when the bully plays the victim and the bully may have the evidence that they want to use. But if you are the victim, you must have your own evidence to, 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 to counter what evidence that bully or, or that harasser may be putting forward. So yes, getting your evidence is clear. But as um, Joy was saying, when the bullying is coming from above, it is even more difficult. But that's why, why I, I agree with Tash in saying, know the laws of the land, understand what the discrimination is all about. Now, there are laws, and then there will be local policies within that organization. You have to become familiar with both. So you know what grounds you're standing on when you're complaining. But sometimes we just know, you know how you feel when you're being discriminated. You know how you feel when you're being bullied. When that happens, you seek help. If, you, if you're in a unionized environment, go to your union. If not, speak to someone outside of work or in work who may be able to, to, to advise you. But as I said at the very beginning, do not tolerate any form of hostility in the workplace. When I was saying one of my experience, I worked for a company that I was the only female. Sometimes the comments on how I dress or my looks, um, but not only from my workmates, but from my boss. Harassment in the workplace experienced by females it's widespread. Um, you would have you, you would have heard years well not years ago a few years ago in America with the, with the Me Too movement when women begin to come out against um, forms of sexual harassment by people in the entertainment industry. It's there is their work, and there's some people who they have to rely on for their jobs. They could their contract and their engagement it happens and it happens so often and it is something that especially in our caribbean territories where sometimes it is seen as if men have a right to do these things or it's seen as if it, as if, as if it's a woman's fault when when these things happen bosses sometimes feel that feel that, that they have some kind of entitlement to um harass women in the workplace. It happens both ways. The phenomenon it happens from men to women. Now, these are clear signs of things that should not be tolerated. Serena says, is asking, what do you do if management gives no help and HR condones said behavior? <laughs> now, it's, it's a very sad place that you're working in, when you find management gives no help when you complain and HR condones the behavior. For me, if you're getting no help and if there is no union, because if the union go to your union, they are the ones who can represent you. There are times when some of these instances, these activities may even be criminal offenses. Do not settle. So yes, that's you're saying, find a good labor lawyer and, co and continue to gather your evidence. Yes, do not settle for it simply because the company isn't on your side. You will know when you're being wronged. You will know when, you, when you're being harassed, especially sexually harassed. Do not 
condone it, whatever shape or form it comes in. Marina, I don't know if you wanted to, to, to come in here with any thoughts of, of your own. Yes, Gerald. Even as I was um, saying that seek help from management and your HR department, at the back of my head, I was thinking, and I was about to ask you, what if this um, harassment is coming from top management? And as I said earlier, you call it out any which way because it is not to be condoned. So you have different ways. You have grievance procedure within the workplace. You have your union. You have the law of the land, as Tash say, said. And you, you cannot be working in a working environment where, or you should not even be working for a boss who does not care for the way in which care for your well-being in the first place. Frankly put, if you are working for someone who cannot treat you right, you shouldn't be working for that person, period. I know it is easier said than done, but you are calling it out in the best possible way. If you know you have your evidence and you know that this kind of abuse or hostility is coming from top, you get to a lawyer or you get to the the labor laws, whatever it is, but you make your report in whichever way is possible. You have the media. I know that is last resort. People don't like to go to the media, but likewise, your boss would not like to know that such kind of behavior within the workplace is publicized because what happened? It is not a place that people would want to go to work easily or freely. So in whatever tool you have at your disposal, you use them, but you use them wisely. If you know you will be going to the media, then that probably will be the last resort. And you know that you are determined that you will not be working there anymore. But for me, I don't think I can work for any boss or with any boss who is abusive and who encourages hostility within the workplace. I prefer to work for myself. I, I don't want us, uh, us to make um, light of this um, subject, Maureen, and, 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 and this is not, not, not um, based on anything what, what you were saying. It, 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 but it, it, it is, when you hear of, the, of experiences of people who have been harassed, Sometimes they feel so trapped that 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 that, they, that it's almost impossible for them to e even want to complain about it. Um, you know, Renell is saying here from her experiences. From her experience, I started dressing with, with caution. I had to stand my ground. Um, but I got fed up when I had a conversation with my boss and he continued to behave in the manner I quit. In that, that manner I quit. Now, this is the point I'm, I'm, I'm making. Renelle's case, in, in her response, she started, to, she, she started to dress differently. What that meant? Okay, I don't know. Was she dressing in, in, inappropriately prior to that? Or, or was it a case where pe people, people were responding inappropriately to, to, to her dress. Let's suppose that it had nothing to do with how she was dressing, but just how people responded. But because of that, she probably started to, to, to dress even more conservatively when there was no need for her to do that because she was dressing, dressing like that in the first case. Now, what does that mean? Right away, she, she the victim, is, is feeling as if it's, it's her fault. And therefore, begin to make amends for it, for it, to correct it. Now, when that happens, you begin to own that problem. And once you begin to own the problem, you take responsibility for it. After a while, it becomes difficult for you then, then to actually complain because you see it as your fault. If I didn't just like this, this wouldn't have happened. 
if I didn't speak to him, to him, to him like this, he wouldn't have thought that I was interested. If I didn't go with them for a drink, then then they wouldn't have caused that line. No, that's how it starts. And the the victim begins to own the problem. There are times when it gets to, to a, a place where you probably need need to see a counselor to get counseling support that is the issue. These are serious things. Harassment, bullying, intimidation, they are serious things that affect people physically and also emotionally. The emotional scars on these are far greater than the physical scars. So do not allow yourself to become victim of these situations. So let's take a pause and let's be clear on what we are saying here. Working in a hostile environment should not be condoned. It should be called out, it should be addressed. And even at the risk, even at the risk of even at the risk of being um, offended by what people may say, you should not allow yourself to be subjected to that continuous abuse. So I should say here, Marina used the word boss, and that in itself carries a serious connotation. Most times persons who see themselves as bosses are haughty, hostile, Toward the employees, believe not a boss. Um. Yes, that 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 does happen. Um. There, there. Having 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 working experience working in the Western countries. There, there is a conscious effort to drop to drop. Uh, title hierarchies. For example, in the Western world, in most businesses, everyone is referred to by first name terms, from the president of the company to the CEO, the managers, everyone is on first name terms. So you will call your CEO John, you will call your chairman David, not Mrs. So and so and Mrs. X. That in itself. It's part of breaking down that, that hierarchy of, 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 of feeling um, e either you need to be respectful of someone ju just because of their name or their title. And I'm saying that because it's the same thing that links links with with um, the word boss. Boss gives a sense of being superior, of being um, someone someone with, with authority, probably beyond what their role. Signifies. So yes, but these are the terms we use, right? And these terms have, have become part of our work culture. However, using the term in itself should not give that person that right to do whatever they they are doing if it's incorrect. You whether, you, whether you're a boss, because bosses will do it. People call themselves a, a, a leader. And they and, and they may still be harassing and bullying. No, they're not a true leader, but they could but they could still be doing that. So even though even though the, these titles are important in breaking down barriers, they're only they're only a small part of the problem. But we can begin there by reducing the way we create hierarchies in the workplace. Um Marino's yeah. Yeah, I want to, um, if you would call it, throw a monkey wrench in here. You're talking about referring to persons within your workplace, whether it's your manager or whatever, on a first name basis. But that is a culture that has been cultured within the Western um, world. Now, think about it. I am not saying that it's not something that should be um, practiced. But it is a culture that has to be built. You imagine it comes, for me, it starts with mutual respect. Because 
if you don't respect me in the first place, don't come calling me Maureen. Be or I will not be calling you Gerald. You know why? Because I might just be opening the door or opening a Pandora's box. I might be opening myself for all sorts of abuse within the workplace. So it depends on the culture that you have to first foster and it comes down to mutual respect. Otherwise, forget it. The name alone doesn't cut it. Agreed. Totally agreed. We got our culture from the West. So the West yep. did what we are doing right now. So if the West have gone, have, have gone through a cultural change to this point where I, I agree the word alone, the, 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 a force name or, or, or not, is not the, the be all and end all of it. But yeah. that attached to it, a changing in, 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 in relationships, a changing how we, we perceive and see each other can go away in terms of breaking down a failure, a feeling of inferiority. If it, you know, it, 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 like Aisha was saying, if if I see my manager as, as my boss, I'm creating an inferiority complex almost immediately. All right. So by not seeing my manager as my boss, but as the person who's managing the team and therefore who I'm accountable for, then immediately I'm kind of reducing that feeling of, of, of being inferior and, and creating a feeling of being part, part of a whole, part of a team. Um, Tash is saying here, let me see if I can be Agreed, but what if that person, Gerald, what if that person sees themselves within, um, in that light? Right? So for me, the bottom line is once they start to treat you in a certain way, you have to stand up for yourself one way or the other. They come to you with it in the first place. You tell them politely, you do not like it. And again, it comes back to your self-esteem, your self-confidence, and your professional courage to deal with it. Correct, correct, correct. I, I, I think Tasha is saying, I believe, I, be, I believe so. Too many things are entirely different from bosses, but it's a fact that some supervisors and managers don't fully understand their responsibilities and roles in the work environment. Yeah. Spot on. Spot on. Totally Agreed. correct. Agreed. Yeah. So I want to move on, um, Maureen, and, and, and I want to bring, to bring you back here to kind of, let's move on to look at, dumb it down a bit, and let's talk about working in difficult workplaces, in a difficult work environment. So it's not hostile, but it's just difficult. Now, difficult work environments are usually caused by difficult people. Right, because people make the work environment. So if it's difficult, it's people. Um, and and it can take various forms. So from your experience, Marine, what are some of the forms that that that, that, you, that you think difficult a difficult workplace can take in terms of um, people or situations that can lead lead to difficult work environment well you have listed some of them already gerald first and foremost we have the bullies right you have also the negative co-worker someone who for the life of you they cannot see things from a positive um standpoint or a positive perspective everything is negative everything is bad those are people that you will come in contact with within the workplace. You have the ones who are just confrontational. For no reason whatsoever, they will be confrontational. And so you have those to deal with as well. And when you have these kind of people within your workplace, it doesn't make it easy to work. But the first point, the first point in it is to be able to identify them. And these 
identification and la- if I, I don't want to use the word label because label sounds like a negative word, but you have to be able, these are behaviors that isn't a behavior that will happen today or once. These are things that are happening and persons who are behaving in this way on a consistent basis. You have people who are difficult to work with. Just downright difficult because they set out to make work and make life difficult for you. You have difficult conversations. People who um, you just cannot have a a proper or I would say (laughs) a proper conversation with them. You cannot have a professional conversation with them. Everything you say, well, however you try to say it, it becomes difficult. So you have those to deal with as well. Then you have those persons with annoying habits and issues. You have difficult boss. And again, we are using this word, boss. You have poor team leaders. And you have those, last but not least on the list, the gossipers. These are all people and situations you come in contact with within the workplace and you have to navigate among these situations and among these people and to deal with them and keep your emotions intact in the process of doing so. All right. So, so um, Maureen Rangel is- said the instigator. <laughs> The one who talks too much. Yes. So you've given us a long list of people and situations in, in which that make workplaces difficult. And, and and I want to go back to the chat and to ask for some comments that people may have in dealing with these situations. So how do you deal with a negative coworker? How do you deal, deal with someone who's confrontational? How do you deal with the difficult people at work? How do you have difficult conversations at work? We 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 be talking about dealing with dealing with with a, a, a difficult boss. How do you deal with the gossip at work? So, share your experiences with us of either how you dealt with any one of these situations or how you think you may deal with them if you ever face with them. Tell us about your work experiences of working with people who are difficult and how did you get around dealing with with them? Because we, we will be sharing um, also how we think um, you can go about dealing with some of these difficult people and difficult conversations. So let's have your thoughts on um, your experiences of, of, of working with difficult people. Um, Maureen, whilst we wait on the chat, have you got any experience that you want to share with working with difficult people without, without naming names? <laughs> you can say me too, you know. All... <laughs> oh, yes, you're my boss, right? <laughs> That's a joke, no, right? I'm not your boss. <laughs> That's a joke because you're a boss that I can actually call Gerald and, and, and be okay with it. <laughs> because I've come to learn that what we have is mutual respect. I remember at one point in time when um, you were my lecturer, I could not bring myself to say, Gerald, at that time, it was definitely Mr. Willibus. But as we grow and you come to know people, you come to learn to respect people, you are able, you build that culture, as we say, you build that culture and you are able to, to work um, respectfully with each other. But dealing with, um, if you want to call it a difficult boss, you have to keep your emotions intact. You have to deal with the issue and the situation and not the person. So you have to remove personality from the problem itself. That's one of the first rules. Don't go all emotional on it. 
separate the prop the person from the pop problem and deal with it in a professional manner. That's what I would say. Okay. Um. Um. And and and, and I'm assuming that, that you're saying that as someone who may have had to, had to, to practice doing that and at at, at some point. Yes. Yeah. In time. It's not always easy, but it is something that you have to grow and learn to do. Otherwise, you will continue to become the victim or see yourself as the victim in, in, in that situation. All right. I see Renel is, 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 is saying to us here, um, I think because I'm, I'm, I'm mostly straightforward and blunt, I don't tolerate gossip in the workplace. Secondly, I think dealing with someone who's difficult is always on on an online reason. So, so that is very true. But then, if the person's difficult, how do you deal with the online reason? Because sometimes you don't even get to that point of of sort on what that online reason is. So then, there's still something there um, to deal with. Serena is saying, because suppose the negative workers have low self-esteem and lack substance. Just ignore them. Let your work speak for itself. Serena, I agree with you, but I can tell you. 100%. A persistent gossiper isn't someone easy to ignore. That's why they're a gossiper. So with best of will, I agree with what you're saying. But sometimes it is really, really hard work to get rid of You just don't join in the gossip. Make sure that you don't get sucked into it. But the gossip still continues. Yes. But you call them out. And the thing about it is that when they're gossiping, you know what, Gerald? The gossip never starts from nothing. It starts from something with a little bit of truth that is blown out of proportion. And you know, they sensationalize the situation. Why do you say that? I often have a difficulty understanding when does a piece of information shared become a gossip? Because we talk about people, we talk about people in the workplace all the time. We, you know, we talk about people. We, we, we um, you know, we comment about people as part of our, of our no normal socialization. Okay, but like you said, uh, sometimes gossip doesn't do start from nowhere at all. It has a starting point that may be quite innocent. Yeah. But when is it that that innocent casual conversation becomes gossip? And at times, the line to draw is a bit very difficult line to draw. Let's see um, some more of what the chat. Saying I, I, I'll ask my technical expert in, in, in the background to take us through the, the chat. Joy saying you have to know yourself, be open minded. So, so some of these persons need help. A conversation with some of them, some of these persons may change the situation. Yes, yes, knowing yourself is a very key part of all this. And being open-minded, um, people needing help for sure. Renel says dealing with a negative person is I keep my distance. Negativity is contagious. Mm -hmm. A good approach, and 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 I I hear that. If the person who's negative and is the person you have to work with day after day constantly, if if, if that person is on the same team as I am, we're working very, very close, then you can't keep your distance or else the work wouldn't get done to the quality level that it should be. So, yes, so even the work much, suffer much and be you weird want to, in the process. Yes, mm -hmm. so even, even much as you want to keep your distance, it isn't always the best, it's not the easiest thing to do. I just says, True. The, neg <laughs> the negative Nancy's. <laughs> I was wondering what you're talking about here. 
<laughs> I I I don't take personally, especially because they are negative due to their own issues that they are trying that they are trying to ignore. You know, they, they sometimes when these negative Nancys do have a point, but they just don't know how to address their issues. Someone comes so to they you need and help. they complain. They come to you and they complain about a situation, right? They may be genuine, may be correct, but all they do is complain, 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 complain. Doesn't say that, that the complaint is wrong, but it says they are doing. I, I want to say nothing, but they do something about it. They're talking to you about it. <laughs> so, so yes, yes, they are wearing you down, right? But but those those negative Nazis need help because they need support in actually dealing with the issues, especially if it's a genuine issue. But the fact that they have an issue in, in itself um, isn't because they they aren't mentioning something that, that isn't important, but it, it, it is how they're addressing it that makes it, that brings in the, 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 the negativity in the whole issue here. So Tash is saying some of them project too. And worse, those who believe gossip and let it pollute work relations. I should say further true. that they are good and bad gossip. I want to know about some of the good gossips, <laughs> what they are. Maybe maybe those sweet ones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. For me, I, gossip sure, is gossip. I'm sure, For me, Gerald. <laughs> I'm sure, Marie. For me, gossip is when it is meant to be negative. That is how I see it. It is meant to be negative. And take, for example, we were saying that it has some bit of truth in it and it is blown out of proportion or it is taken and it is spread, right? It is meant to be spread like wildfire. Maureen comes into work and when Maureen passes through the doorway, Maureen has a very high perspiration. Someone picks it up, right? And rather than calling maureen as a colleague or going to hr or finding the supervisor someone who can talk to maureen about her high perspiration they take it and they start to susu about it how can that be tell me is that gossip this is something that we're saying it starts with a piece of fact and it is then spreaded around the place those so, are so, and that's just one one way one one point and say sorry so so marie my question to you is is, is that how part you of deal with that if, if, if that is the case is it, it, spreading is repeating that fact is it gossip it I is gossip it, it, i want it rather than going call it to gossip. someone <laughs> you come to me or you find someone who you can you're confiding in this person because it is going to be affecting the work environment, right? Whichever way it, it has a negative effect on you and you want to have this matter solved because you're in the workplace and you want to be, you're spending at least eight hours there, you want to be comfortable. And if my perspiration is making the environment uncomfortable, then someone needs to tell me about it. But don't go about spreading it. Get into some way. It's either you go to HR, you have HR call, call me in, your line manager, somehow, but it must be the issue must be dealt with. That is what we're saying. Separate the person from the situation and deal with it. All right. I should say here, when it becomes defamatory and outright lies, it's got it. Those those keep silent on as I choose not to speak in part in passion, as I have to apologize for my response. As I will not apologize for my response, so I will keep silent. You know, 
managing the emotion. That is the emotional part of, of things. <laughs> yes. When gossip, you know, especially when it's defamatory and lies, um, that's more just gossip. That, that's gossip for me is is it is it has started to, to do with, with that opinion um side of it. We're we're not the same. Gossip is always negative. And yes, go directly to the person, deal with it there and then instead of carrying it around. And Joy says some of them need responsibilities so they can be accountable. Lots of times, yes, um, you know, they, they, that thing where people have too much time on their hands. Oh, wow. Yes, Aisha comes back and says, good gossip. <laughs> <laughs> when he was awarded the scholarship oh. to do her master's degree, I'm aware. I love to chit and chat. So before Maureen tells anyone, I speak on it. It's a gossip about You're still a rapper tale, Aisha. <laughs> Aisha, then thanks for the gossip. You're still a rapper tale. <laughs> Aisha, thanks for the gossip. <laughs> Marie, congrats. <laughs> Aisha, sharing, Aisha sharing gossip Thank here. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. So. We got 15 minutes left in our program and and i want to to, to us to um leave on a note of giving some advice as to how you can deal effectively with a difficult work environment I, I think maureen um spoke about the first one about avoiding becoming emotional when dealing with um difficult people or difficult work situations be, avoid being, being emotional, especially when dealing with professional criticism. You will be criticized. It may be difficult. But you know what? If you can remove your emotions or manage your emotions, <laughs> then it becomes easy to deal with. Okay? So the first thing is we must work on managing our emotions. We've been talking, talking about this for the last three, four weeks. How do we manage our emotions, especially in light of criticism? <laughs> Marine, Marine, it, 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 seems, it seems as if you, you, you want to share something. Aisha. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, Aisha is gossiping now. Aisha is just being mischievous. <laughs> A couple of words, may I speak on it. It's something good, however, it's still gossiping. Oh. Okay. Okay, Aisha, Aisha, I, 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 I begin to think now that your experience is gossiping. <laughs> you, know, you know exactly <laughs> how to gossip. <laughs> so, so, so be careful. Um, um, you know, you know, um, de developing a label here. <laughs> of being a, being a, a very good gossip. <laughs> So Tasha says, oh. yes, I agree that personal feelings and biases must be removed from professional work. So yes, yes. let us, let us try, try to be professional. The second, way to, second point I, I, I want to, to mention here is empower your colleagues through praise. Now, this is very important. You are, you are in a difficult work environment. If you, if, if you want to, to change that, then encourage people. They, they, they do something well. Tell them, you know, a good job. Give a thank you. Give praise. Tell them how much you appreciate their, their work and their service. If even with someone who attempts can, can be difficult, praise breaks down barriers. That's and it's one true. of the sure ways of engaging people. So if you're in a difficult work environment, use praise. It, it make them feel empowered and make them feel that you appreciate what they're doing. And it, and it, it can melt away any differences. They may begin to see you in a different light because they may have seen you as, as someone who's arrogant, stuck up, and now you begin to praise them. What, what it does, it melts away those difficulties. Um, 
be a proactive communicator. Take the initiative. When you go into office in the morning, what do you do? do are you on these people who say, I come here to work not to make friends? If so, I think I think you, you have a very outdated approach to work. Because you come to work and your work in a social environment. So so you have to relate with people. So be proactive, reach out to people. When you go in, do you say good morning? Do you ask people, in, you know, how's your day going? How was your evening? Do, do you ask them anything about anything? The proactive can make it to build relationships. And that you build relationships, you're breaking down barriers. I will um, probably relate one more than I ask Maureen to um, come in with some of our own. Um, think carefully before escalating issues with higher management. So I think we were talking about this earlier, where whatever issues you're facing in the current environment, you have, you have bosses, you have superiors, but sometimes use your proactive communication skills to build some of these relationships. And first of all, ask yourself the question, can I address it to the person directly? If, if you can do that, it solves many problems. However, if you can't, then you go one step up and try to get things addressed because you've tried on a one-to-one -one basis and you didn't get through with that. And then reach out in the same way. Go beyond the call of duty. It shows people that you are thinking about them, that you're caring, and that you're willing to do what is necessary to bring about an improvement in whatever we are doing. And so I want to bring Maureen here to, to kind of shed some light on, on, on some more things that, that, that we can do um, to improve our working environment if we work in a difficult work environment. Gerald, earlier on, not so long ago, you spoke about um, praise and offering praise within the work environment if someone does something. And you know, you do not, you might not even realize what you are doing when you, um, when you are generous with your praise. Someone does something and you praise them because you might, uh, of course, you're breaking down barrier, as we said. But you might not even know that because of that person's low self-esteem, that person might have seen you as a threat within the workplace. But when you can be open, you can be, um, you can give them praise. They, you know, they come to realize, you know what? Maureen is really not a threat to me. It is just that it is just me because you make them feel comfortable because it was just them who were feeling uncomfortable working with you. And so when you are able to give them the praise, you are able to compliment and to give um, genuine compliments. They realize that even though you might come into work and you might be serious, you're not, you're not a mean person. So that is one way. Correct. That that's quite true. Um, then you, you, you fall on from that, Maureen. Um, you have to develop your own coping mechanisms in dealing with difficult co-workers. Some people will ignore. Some people will confront. Some people will, will engage. Some people some people will, will smile it off. What is your mechanism to cope with these difficult situations and difficult co-workers? You have to develop what works best for you because we, we are all have different personalities. So think about the situation and think about what you can do to help you cope and manage them. Some situations, some of the things you, you can't change overnight. Okay? Someone is a gossip. You got to work with them. 
That can change overnight. But develop your means of coping with that gossip. Like we were saying earlier, some people say ignore them. Don't don't get don't get get involved in the gossiping, right? So you develop a way that you can manage to cope with these situations whenever they occur. I just said be cordial and collegial. Look for the positive and avoid being negative with critics. Be truthful, helpful, inspiring, necessary, and kind. Now, that is all part of, of, of you reaching out to develop a relationship that, that, that can work for you. Focus on developing a positive work like balance. Sometimes. Definitely. Sometimes there is stress that leads to us being difficult or being seen or seeing other people difficult. Um, you, you know, someone who maybe you want to leave work early, but someone wants to stay back to work because there's work to be done. Or vice versa, you're working late every day whilst people have things to do and they want to leave on time. So it becomes that you see the person being lazy, you see them as being difficult. They, they, don't, they don't want to play their part. They don't want to, to um, contribute towards working extra. Sometimes you need a work life balance. You need to leave work early also. You need to have a balance between working and, and relaxing. So having a work life balance helps in maintaining these good working relationships. And then have a plan B. Because sometimes having a plan B is not necessarily that you're going to implement that plan B, but having a plan B gives you a safety net to address the situation that you're dealing with. For example, um, I'm going through a difficult patch at work because the people I'm working with in my team are very difficult. No, I can engage with them. Okay, but it may have its difficulties. But I know that the company down the road has, is willing to offer me a job, but I really don't want to go and work there. But I have a plan B. That can give me the confidence to go and try to change change my current team because this is where I prefer to work. But but I know I know if 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 it fails, I have a plan B. Sometimes having that plan B gives you more confidence, more strength, and more assurance to actually um, confront the situation that, 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 that you're faced with. You have, you have a boss who's being difficult. You confront your boss because if it goes somewhere, you have a plan B. So, so if you don't have a plan B, you will not confront your boss because you, you don't because of fear of losing your job or whatever. So a plan B can be something that, that, that can give you that extra push to address whatever you're currently going through. I see Renata saying, being an inspiration to people or someone in your workplace, have a positive influence on them and in, and in the workplace. Yes, yes, being positive yeah. is always an important, they're always important. And you know what? Having a plan B has to be a plan B as you're prepared to put into Effect if things happen, don't have it and and, and dangle dangle it over the people. You know the people <laughs> who will, will go around saying, "I don't need this job," I don't, need, I, you know, and 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 that's their excuse. Let them push me. I will leave this job, <laughs> and th that their plan B is a threat. But they but they were the ones who were never leaving. So even if they have, they have a plan B, they you know that they ain't put that plan B in place, so you can ignore them and their plan B. So in those cases, people ignore you and you become ineffective. Aisha yeah. says, managing emotions in an outdoor work environment is never easy or enjoyable, but it's crucial to maintain a positive workspace, to have, to have all feel valued, contributions and motivated to engage. That's the whole aim of- I totally agree. Addressing your work environment. Not easy, 
but it's important. So, so those are some of the ways that, that we would say that you should engage in, in terms of managing your work environment. And you know what? This is what I will say. And, and this is based on what I think most of the comments were saying. Um, be proactive. In order to adopt a difficult adopt this, a difficult work environment and develop coping means, your ability to be proactive is pivotal. So being proactive means that you are taking the initiative. It means that you aren't sitting on the fence allowing things to go by. It not only enables you to confront issues head on and communicate directly with those at the heart of the problem. People hate to be confronted when they know, especially when they know they're wrong. And even if they're right, if you confront someone, you clear the air. You may have, you, you may have had a misconception. Confronting doesn't necessarily mean being, being aggressive. It means addressing the issue. So you can out. confront you can confront politely, but it's about addressing the issue. It allows you to develop alternative plans in the event that your complaints cannot be resolved. So because you've been proactive, you know I am going through this thing here. However, there may be issues. But I'm being proactive with my, with my plan B. Now without that it's difficult for you to move forward in your career. It's difficult for you to achieve an effective workplace. So my closing comment is, whatever you do, if you're working in a hostile environment, do not tolerate it. If it's difficult, be proactive and engage to bring about a change. Maureen, I'll give you the last say here. Do not add to the stress. Bring solution, not problem. Excellent. So with that, we, we will close off here by saying, as you manage emotions in a hostile or difficult workplace, remember, you are in control. You may be bullied, victimized, harassed, gossiped about, whatever it is, you are in, in charge of your response. Be proactive, engage, as Maria say, bring solutions, but whatever you do, have a plan B and be prepared to implement your plan B. With that, we will, we will want to close off here by saying to you, join us again next week but we shall be looking at an, uh, another interesting topic in this series of emotions. Because we've been looking at emotions um, for the past three to four weeks or more. And we want to look at how to become the boss of your emotions. So having discussed all these things about managing em em emotions, let's come together next week again. Thursday evening, 6, 6.30, same place, same time, to discuss how to become the boss of your emotions. Until then, I hope you have had a good program as I've had. I'm still smiling. So from Marina myself, yes. it's bye for now until next week.